All right, let's go ahead and officially get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you again so much for joining us uh, for a webinar on customer service in the age of coronavirus, why it is more important than ever for dance studios. This webinar is hosted by Dance Business Weekly and sponsored by Jackrabbit Dance. My name is Lauren Wingenroth, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Dance Business Weekly along with Dance Teacher. If you're not familiar with us at Dance Business Weekly, we are a weekly newsletter bringing dance studio owners as well as everyone else who is in the business of dance, all of the information, news, tips, tricks, advice that you need to keep your studio or dance business thriving. Um, we are really excited to be joined by Molly Stroud of Jackrabbit and Michelle Soutier of Miller Street Dance Academy. Um, Molly, will you start us off telling us a bit about yourself and about Jackrabbit Dance? Sure. Thank you for having us, Lauren. Very excited to be here. My name is Molly. I am um, on the marketing team at Jackrabbit Dance. I'm a lifelong dancer, grew up dancing, studied in college, actually taught briefly after graduation until I transitioned into my career in marketing. That's been um, for about 10 years now. I like to focus on content marketing um, and event marketing primarily. But if you are um, you know, new to Jackrabbit, newer to um, what it is that we do, we are, um, we are the industry's first studio management software. And so what that means is we help dance studios grow their business by offering them ways to offer um, or to offer um, online enrollment, billing, make billing easy, make collecting tuition payments easy, streamlining their business to communicate with parents, students, um, offering a time clock, pretty much anything that we can do to streamline the business to help you grow. That is what we focus on at Jackrabbit Dance. We've been around since 2004. We are in over 12,000 schools, all 50 states, um, 28 countries, and we are about 80 people strong. Um, our team is full of 80 people just ready to help um, you all grow your business. So um, I'm, I'm super excited to be here, super excited to be with Jackrabbit Dance. You know, it's, it's not every day that you get to wake up doing what you love. I love doing what I do in marketing, but I especially love doing it because I get to help people like you. Um, and I get to help the industry that I'm so much, that I'm so passionate about grow every single day. So Happy to be here, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Uh, and Michelle, tell us a bit about yourself and your studios. Um, well, I opened uh, my first studio um, with 21 students 26 years ago. And um, by the end of the year, I had a little over 100 students. And um, 11 years ago, I opened my second location in Fort Mill, South Carolina. So I've got the two locations now. And um, we had pre-COVID, we had about 2,500 students. So I'll let you know um, later how it is for this year, but, um, <laughs> but we're, we're hanging in there. And um, so I've, I, my doors are 20 minutes um, apart, even though I'm one in North Carolina and one in South Carolina. But um, so it's easy to get to both. It sounds crazy that I'm in two different states, but um, they're very close. Cool. All right, before we officially dive into this topic, just one Sort of housekeeping note, um, we, uh, we are going to have a dedicated Q&A section at the end, um, but we want to hear your questions all throughout the webinar. So whenever you have one, please go ahead and ask and then we'll collect them all for the end. You can use the Q&A feature, which should be at the bottom of your Zoom screen to ask a question. Um, and then you can also always um, ask questions or make comments, um, add thoughts in the chat feature. Um, just make sure if you want everyone to see what you're saying that you select all panelists and then if you want to just ask a, a question to um, us panelists, you can feel free to um, switch to, to just all panelists. Um, and we will be actually prompting you to, um, to use the chat a bit throughout the webinar. Alrighty, so we are here to talk about customer service in the age of COVID-19, why it is more important than ever for dance studios. 
Um, and what we're really talking about is, um, as Michelle started to talk about, is our fall enrollment numbers. Um, there are so many unknowns right now in the world. Um, and unfortunately, some studio owners are seeing that uncertainty reflected in numbers so far for the fall. Um, and while there is a lot that's out of our control when it comes to the pandemic, there is also a lot that's in our control. Um, and one of those things is customer service. Um, customer service has so much power to show your value as a studio, um, even during this time, especially during this time. Um, and also make the parent experience as easy as possible, which, you know, it's a crazy and hectic time for everything. So with really exceptional customer service, we can position ourselves as a place of normalcy and stability for our studio families, rather than, you know, adding to the craziness of our lives. Um, so these things are going to be what keeps families engaged, what keeps them with your studio. So again, we're really lucky, lucky to have Michelle and Molly here. They have some really interesting perspectives on this topic. Um, Molly, as someone who with Jackrabbit is, has been supporting studios during this time as they execute on these um, customer service ideas and try to maintain their enrollment. Michelle, as someone who is going through that herself, who has had some really interesting um, experiences she's offered to her studio families to keep them engaged. So yeah, let's dive in. Um, let's hear from you first, Molly. Let's, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on sort of the role of customer service during this time. Why might you feel it's particularly important and what are studio families looking for out of their studios right now? Well, I think this time aside, customer service, there's no denying the correlation between, between customer service and, and revenue. You know, the better customer service you have, the more students you'll retain, the more students you'll attract, and obviously that leads to more classes, more tuition revenue. Um, so there, there's no denying that, but especially during this time, and you, you um, spoke to it a little bit in your introduction, the hypothesis is that people are looking for that, that sense of normalcy. Um, you know, there's normalcy, there's connection, there's this, I feel like whenever the, there's so much unknown, people find comfort in, um, in your certainty and in having connection to something that, that they want new. So if, if studios are able to provide some sort of outlet, whether it be dancing in their living room or just having some sort of connection to their friends at the studio, um, you know, that, that in and of itself is going to make people feel more connected um, to you and to your studio. And whether they, they realize it now or whenever you're able to open enrollment, you know, some people are starting to open back up and um, there's, they're seeing enrollment um, pick up. So whether they're noticing it now or when they feel more comfortable coming back into a public setting, say in a few months or maybe next year, they're definitely going to remember that experience the way that they made you feel. So the way that you made them feel. So I feel like there's no denying that customer service, um, make, having that emotional connection, making people feel a sense of normalcy, like you said, is extremely important right now. Yeah. Michelle, same question to you. Why might customer service be important right now, particularly important right now, and what are studio families looking for? Um, I feel like um, right now we have a chance as studio owners to um, build as the hero for, for later. Things that we're doing now, it, it will come back tenfold later. And I found that to be true because back in March when all this started going down and they, we basically had a, a week or two to pull this together, the first thing I said to myself is, I have to give them more than they're paying for. I immediately took everything down to 50% tuition because they were not getting their Miller Street experience in house because I couldn't, I could not give them that. And um, so we, as a team, um, and since the studios are only 20 minutes apart, I had nine dance floors. I put teachers in, in the dance rooms for that entire week, 13 hours a day, creating videos. And we created over 800 videos to email out to our families every week for their weekly class. Um, we had a Miller Street song that I had written years ago 
um, that was on the front of it and it had our legalese and that. And then there was a message from the teacher on the end. And because of technology and how it's done now, um, we could do this. 25 years ago, had this happened, my business would have gone under. I wouldn't have had it. Um, and because I'm with Jackrabbit and they're really the only company that can can support a company as big as mine with the enrollment that I have. Um, one of the features that really worked for us was, um, and Molly, I wanted to tell you this, is being able to put those videos in their portals. So I didn't have to email them thousands of emails because that was another thing. Part of customer service is listening to what they're saying. And they were like, we're inundated with emails from schools and all this, you know, these poor parents are one day at work doing normal and the next thing they've got children at home and they're trying to go on with their lives. So. I feel like going that extra mile and just saying, you know what, this is not fun. This is just not what I want to be doing, but do it. And uh, so many extra things that we were able to offer because I went in with that mindset. Now I'm having parents saying, we cannot believe how you handled this, this pandemic. And, you know, we're at 55% enrollment right now and we start classes on Tuesday. Um, and I feel like that's going to grow as people become more comfortable. So I'm not, I'm not freaked out that it's so low. I'm actually happy it's so high. You know, I, I'm looking at it as we have 55% coming back in the middle of a pandemic. So um, I think just us saying to ourselves, we're going to give them more than they pay for. And really delivering that shows that we really care about the customers and they need it now. Absolutely. Molly, you work with so many dance studios. Um, with Jackrabbit. I'm curious, what are some of the most memorable or unique um, customer service experiences that you've seen your clients deliver to their customers? And, and while you answer that, I want to ask all of our attendees the same question. Um, what are some of the most unique um, customer service ideas or um, extra experiences that you were able to implement during this pandemic. Let us know in the chat while Molly talks to us about what she's seen. Yeah, so it's no surprise that dancers, you know, we're creative. Um, I don't know why we were so shocked by just so many like mic drop creative moments that um, we saw our clients offering to their customers. Aside from um, virtual classes, you know, we had a lot of our um, dance studios pivot to a digital platform and when they did that just like the the creativity that we saw was just so inspiring I think one of my favorites was um, we had a client in North Carolina she if, if you've been on a cruise if you've heard of a cruise you know that they have different themed days so in addition to her regular recital rooms which was she had a shorter um, technique class for people who were preparing for the end of your recital, you know, this was March, we thought that we, this would only last for a little bit, we'd be able to get back together and have um, an end of your performance. So she continued those classes. However, she offered what she called cruise ship courses. And they were two different, um, they were two different types of courses, you could enroll in recital rooms or cruise ship, you could do both. But cruise ship courses every week would have a different theme, just as a cruise ship would every day. So we saw things from, you know, Dancing with your dog, princess camp. They had, you know, Hamilton. Hamilton came out on Disney Plus. You had to do something with Hamilton, right? <laughs> um, same with Frozen 2, whenever that came out. So there was just a lot of creativity. And I think the, oh, and Project Runway, this is what I'm going to expand on. I think the one thing that I loved so much about that offering was it wasn't just the 20 minute class or the 30 minute class in the living room. So this Project Runway example, um, the, the student, had to come up with their outfit, you know, it's Project Runway. They had to design a look. They had to do, um, choreograph a catwalk routine down and back. Then they had to talk about it afterwards. So whenever they would log on to Zoom, it was more than just looking at your friends on Zoom and then doing your performance, your little runway walk, and then talking about it. You also had, the student had to be engaged throughout the week. So it gave them something to do. Um, for 30 minutes one day, come up with your costume. For 20 minutes the next day, figure out what, how you're gonna um, walk up and down the runway. So I thought that that was, um, you know, it's, it's more than just what you're getting in class. Like what you said, Michelle, they are gonna get so much more than when they're just in class with us. Um, other things that we saw, I, I thought it was very um, smart for the dance studios who brought in the families. like offering a mommy and me yoga type class because the parents were at home too. You couldn't, 
you couldn't forget that mom and dad, they're now playing teacher and they're working and they have to, you know, they need some sort of outlet too. So I thought that that was um, very, very smart. And I loved seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, I especially loved all the examples I saw that incorporated other family members. I thought that was really fun. I saw some where um, students were tasked with teaching some of their recital dance to someone in their family or someone in their quarantine pod, which, and then posted videos to social media, which was really fun. Um, a few, a few of our attendees are, are telling us about some things they did. Melissa um, developed an activity schedule with story time, game night, movie night, refresher dance classes on, on Zoom, which sounds fun and sort of in line with what you were saying, Molly. Um, Rebecca saying a recital night at the local drive-in where videos were compiled of kids performing their dances at home and edited together. Um, and then, then they came to the drive-in in costume. That's so fun. fun. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Michelle, I know you have lots of um, ideas up your sleeve. Tell us about the, some of the creative things that you were doing um, during this time to provide those exceptional customer service experiences. Well, I, um, with them getting their weekly classes, and um, we had reduced them to 30 minutes each, too, because we were basically just trying to get ready for recital. And um, so I told the girls, I said, we have to have our weekly classes, but I also want to have a lot of Zooms every day that we can offer for all different things. We had games. Um, we had scavenger hunts. Uh, we had daddy-daughter dance. Um, my husband and my daughter did... Um, um, a daddy-daughter choreography thing, and um, my husband was the worst one there, um, as he kept stepping on Natalie, and so, <laughs> but he was encouraging the other dads, telling them how good they were doing, so it was great. Um, we had, um, I had mornings with Miss Michelle each week um, at 10 o'clock every morning, and I would dress, I wore the same pink shirt, and I dressed my, my dog, Macy Kathleen, in a pink shirt um, to match mine, because the children love dogs, and so everybody brought their dogs with them to, to, and wore pink stuff, so it was really fun, but mornings with Miss Michelle became something that they kind of looked forward to and it gave the moms a chance to kind of do something else for that 30 minutes and then right after that I would read Charlotte's Web so I, I would read novels to the kids so I had remembered my second grade teacher reading that and I thought you know it has nothing to do with dance but the brothers were coming because it wasn't always girly stuff the brothers were coming um, I had been sent to finishing school as a child never knowing that I would be able to use it on zoom and teach kids how to set tables how to write thank you notes um, everything I could do. I carried my computer and did it. Um, just things to keep the children engaged and marketed it as mom, take a break, let the children, we'll entertain the children. And so if I saw that the teachers weren't doing enough of their own Zooms, I would fill in with things. So each, every day I would say, okay, I'm gonna do two solid hours. Here's what I'm doing. Boom, boom, boom. And I would fill in those times to make sure that we were keeping these children ultra busy because at that point, the school systems were we're not in my area keeping them busy during the day. So we really tried to step up and do that. Yeah. We have a fan in the comments. Emily says, <laughs> mornings with Miss Michelle was the best. <laughs> um, and I love that you taught them you... how... I'm sorry, I love that you taught them how to write thank you notes. That's yeah. like a true Southern mama thing. I absolutely love that. I know, isn't that funny? I'm probably yeah. the most Southern person that I know. And um, so I, uh, you know, and I laugh because mom said, I told you that, so that finishing school would help because it was murder. Right? Yeah. But, um, but no, it really did. And the children um, were posting pictures online of writing thank you notes and setting tables and all. So it really was. I love that. Michelle, could you talk just a little bit more about um, how you were executing on some of these things. It would, sounds like so much, and I think everyone's probably wondering, how did she do it all? Well, I, I have a good staff. Um, my staff is unbelievable, actually. And I would ask them, what things are you interested in doing? Because if people like what they're doing, they'll do better at it. So, um, and I'll like whatever I have to for 30 minutes. So, um, so I can fill in the gaps. So um, I would, Miss Vicki, she did um, lunch with Miss Vicki. So she would um, engage the children and they would literally sit and eat and just talk about things going on, trying to keep them engaged. Some people were better at doing game nights. Um, my sister did Disney trivia. 
And um, so she would do, and, and she got to where her 30 minute Zoom turned into an hour Zoom because there were so many children logging on, they didn't want to get off. So we just kept doing that. And she's got a, a, a two year old at home. So she had to be strategic with how she did it. But we also had some, some of the teachers like doing stretch classes and hip hop classes and all of that. So there were a lot of extra Zoom classes and probably the coolest thing that I, I did, I, thank goodness I thought of it, is when we did all those videos, after the videos were sent to each individual class, they went into our supplemental page that the dancers could log on to and take how to take turns, how, a jazz combination, whatever. So they could go on and take a class. And we just took it down last week because it was so well used over the summer, even after recital. Parents said, please don't take that down because we're still wanting to dance and, you know, they weren't paying for it, but it was worth it because it kept these children busy. And we're really, really, really trying to support our families right now because they are, they're, they're living with some tough situations. But I found the happier the kids looked and the more engaged. And when I would log on and there would be pages and pages of people on my Zoom, it spurred me to do even more the next day. So I would try to come up with something even better the next time. And something that worked, I would keep that and then add something else. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you also mentioned um, doing outdoor classes more recently, and um, I'm also in North Carolina, so I know that um, the weather can be pretty unpredictable. And I mean, yes, I did. Um, I did outdoor dance because it was legal, and so I um, set up tents. I bought all these tents, and my husband and I spent six and a half hours one morning, got it really early, got it out there just perfect. We had everything rolled out. We'd had it up about six, six and a half minutes. I was admiring how nice it looked. I went in to get my phone so I could take a picture, send it to the kids and say, we're ready for outdoor dance. This weird storm that was not on the radar just came. I think it was Jesus telling me not to do outdoor dance that day and lifted all the tents that were tied together and done and slammed them against trees. Luckily they didn't hit cars. It was just raining. We're standing. He's across under one thing. And I mean, it is absolute chaos. It looked like a pile of dinosaur bones within three or four minutes sitting in the middle. All the, the tops were off the tents. And so I was like, okay, just breathe. So we cleaned it all up. It took hours to cut it up because, you know, they were, you get pinched when you try to pick them up. So I ordered some other tents, put those out. They lasted a day and a half and they were destroyed. So the kids and parents noticed how hard I was doing, working, trying to keep this outdoor dance thing going. And um, so the third day, I reordered tents again and um, put them up again. We did a little more weight. Now we had more than 2,400 pounds on each tent. Believe it or not, these pop-up storms or something. I'm $4,000 into buying tents at this point. My parents came through the parking lot with a parade just dozens and dozens of cars decorated, thanking me for doing this. And I'm out here actually finishing putting the tents up. My husband knew they were doing this. I didn't. And at the end gave me a donation for over $4,000 that they had, and they had no clue that that's what I had spent on tents and thanking me for continuing. And because they saw how hard I'm working to keep this going for their kids, they were wanting to keep me going because I think they thought at some point this crazy woman's going to stop. Like, but I don't, I just keep saying, you know what, we, we, this is what we do, you know, and the kids need this. So um, believe it or not, these tents are still up and this has been weeks into it. So, so we've been very blessed and it did, it showed me that the, the human side of them, you know, they, they really were noticing what I was doing and um, my, my other dance friends around the, the nation were really supportive of me too. Um, every time I'm ordering new tents, but um, because it's so hot and you, as you know, it gets in the nineties and the humidity's high here. Every 30 minutes I come through with popsicles cooling everybody down. So we come out there and you have to move fast because they melt so fast, giving out popsicles for the dancers. I don't care. Even if they're in the middle of it, I just walk through and get hand out popsicles. So now the kids love to come because they get popsicles every 30 minutes. <laughs> so, um, so everything works out and, um, and you build a lot of character through all this. Absolutely. So clearly Michelle is an example of how much studios have had to adapt and how hard studio owners are working. And um, I'm curious to hear from Molly from Jackrabbits end of things. Um, what have you been doing to support all those adaptations? What's, what's new over at Jackrabbit? Or, you know, if I could call it one example before you answer, I know um, 
when we were talking earlier, Michelle, you were saying how, you know, if you have an outdoor dance class scheduled and all of a sudden the storm's coming, Jackrabbit makes it really easy to be like, okay, never mind, no outdoor dance classes, we're on Zoom, and um, the portal allows you to facilitate that process really easily. So the link's there, and even if they're halfway to the, the parking lot, um, they can turn back around and yes. hop on Zoom. So. And that happens every day. You know, if our classes start at 3, it's not going to have a storm until 2.35. So right. everybody's on their way and excited about outdoor dance. And then we put on social media, all forms of social media, halt, go home, no, you know, no outdoor dance, or they would call in and say, it's pouring rain here. What is it doing there? So there was a lot of good communication, but we would just put if we weren't doing it and we'd say, Zooms are in your portals. If it was not for Jackrabbit, I would not still be open because I could not have gotten this information to them. And I mean, another side story is years ago um, when we, uh, we had the one location um, we were with another company. And I don't even remember which one it was. My office manager would know, but um, we shut down their servers because everybody at one time was trying to click to get, you know, we opened registration and, um, and I, we were losing our minds because now nobody can register. And um, Gina, my office manager did the research and found Jackrabbit and said, I just really think we ought to give this company a try. I think they're going to have what we need. And they have never failed us. So, I mean, for, for me, I have to say, if my back office is out of order, I look terrible in the front. So um, I just appreciate Jackrabbit for that. That's why I'm such a big fan because it has just proven me over and over and over. And um, also, I'm going to tell you another little feature for those guys that are doing you the stay at home um, where the children come into the studio to do their schoolwork. We found a feature through Jackrabbit. And Molly, you're going to have to help me with what this is. But they can check the days that they're coming in to the studio so that I can keep track of which kids are coming in which day so that I have it staffed properly. And I know how many in, uh, enrollment um, how much enrollment I can take. Do you know what that's called on Jackrabbit? Are you familiar with which part I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I believe you're talking about per day classes. That's it. Yes. And so, um, so whenever the office came to me and said, we have something, Gina said, oh, you're going to love this. And she, she actually FaceTimed me in to show me where it was and how much easier because I was actually doing it on pen and paper, trying to keep up to make sure that I didn't over enroll for certain days in my pathway program. So, I mean, it just keeps getting better. And, I, you know, everybody uses their costume section and all this just keeping because we have so many, we have thousands and thousands of costumes. If we, if we had to do it the old style, like I used to do, I wouldn't be able to. So it's Jackrabbit's really bailed me out through the pandemic and it, even before that. So I'm very blessed. Yeah. Thanks. That's a great segue to, to Molly, you telling us a, a bit about some of those new features that you rolled out during the pandemic and how Jackra Jackrabbit has adapted um, throughout this time. Yeah, so early on, whenever um, COVID was coming to the States and we could see that our studios were going to have to pivot to a, um, a digital platform, I think we went out on a Friday not knowing really what was going to happen. Um, and then stuff got real. And um, studios, there was a real need for, um, for online dance. So our product team and our development team got so busy, they put the pedal to the metal and just really figured out what it was that our that our clients needed. So luckily we have this thing at Jackrabbit, it's called the Idea Portal. And any of our clients can go in to tell us what, what enhancements they need um, or that would help their businesses if that was made to the software, what new features would help them grow their business, what would make their lives easier. So we, we look to the Idea Portal all of the time whenever we are coming up with enhancements to make you know, outside of COVID, just annually. Um, but during COVID, we saw um, an overwhelming need for online classes. So we made that available. Michelle made the mention, like, if she was having to email out individual Zoom links to people, like, it would just be so chaotic. We needed to make sure that our clients were only giving access to virtual classes to people who had paid, to people who were supposed to be in that class. You know, you don't want a two-year-old getting advanced jazz links, you know, that would, that would make you look bad, be frustrating, it would cause double, triple the work on your end. Um, so we, we made um, virtual classes um, an, an option within Jackrabbit. Um, another thing, since 
classes aren't necessarily, um, you know, virtual classes. Maybe you don't want to offer points, <laughs> a virtual point class in your living room. There's a safety issue there, you know. So what other resources do our teachers need to get into the hands of their students and their families so that they can develop, so that they can grow and attend class? So we have um, a resource management tool where, parent, where um, teachers can upload worksheets, you know, if, if it is that point class or if, you know, it, you know we're not just in the dance um, world, we have swim schools, we have gymnastics schools. So if it's a worksheet of some sort, like if it's an at-home workout that they can do to supplement what it is that they're doing in their shortened technique class, um, giving, um, giving a space for the studios to, to give that file, because we know it's not just Zoom links. It could be a file, it could be a music, um, a recording of a, a, a recital song because people were still practicing for their end of year recital. So having um, an, a one place, and this is one place, a parent logs into their parent portal, they have access to all of these resources. So we saw that that was a huge need. Um, other things that we did, we made it easy for um, the math actions, made it easy for people, uh, for studio owners to drop a family from not just one class, but maybe all of the classes that they are enrolled in. Um, and email templates, like we already had emails set up in, um, in the system so that where studio owners could easily go and communicate like happy birthday or whatever type of the message it was, we um, updated those templates to take on the messaging that, that they needed to send out. So it's, it's you know, we hated to, to upload the we're closed. We, I mean, we had to, we unfortunately just had to provide that. Um, the, we switched to a virtual, um, platform and digital platform and now the we're starting to reopen you know like all of those things that we could do to make life a little bit easier and a lot easier for our studios um, we we pivoted on a dime to execute on that and our product team and development team I mean just hats off to them they have been amazing at executing on these enhancements yeah I know too in addition to new features and enhancements there are some existing features that sort of have new relevance now during this time. Um, skills tracking, the live streaming, contactless payments. Could you talk a little bit about those two? Yeah, sure. So you know how much our team loves skills tracking. Um, so <laughs> we, we have the parent portal. We also have the staff portal. And inside that, um, the staff can, you know, whether it's a, a certain turn or a leap that maybe this one class is focusing on or a sequence of them, if they're working on, um, say a turn sequence, every week or every class, the instructor can go in and say how they are attaining those skills. You know, what's new? That pushes over to the parent portal so the parent can then see um, the progress of the student. One thing that was so interesting is, you know, states are different as, as facilities are starting to reopen, you know, temperature, it's required to take temperature and then record it. Um, so we, some of our studios have started using the skills tracker to, to record the student's temperature for that week. And I just thought that that was amazing. I think we all did. We were like, I mean, boom, like just like the biggest <laughs> light bulb, like who would have thunk? You know, I mean, you know, we're, again, it's, we're creative people. Whenever you have something, you will, you'll get creative to use it to make it work. So that was one um, just aha type of a moment. We've always had um, an e-payment processing platform. So parents can, you know, or parents, um, well, I mean, parents can pay their tuition online, um, but then studio owners, they can process tuition all at once. So we have rebranded that essentially into contactless payments. You know, it used to be, if you don't have time to do this, you know, to manually go in and run cards, you can do it all with e-payments after, after, after your classes are over for today. Well, if you're at home, you know, you can't go into the studio. If you're at home and you still need to process tuition because you are offering online classes, I mean, it's just contactless payments. You can run it from, you can run all of those contact, contact you can run all of those payments um, from home, from anywhere, essentially. And now that re-enrollment is starting to happen, there's no need for your parents to come into the studio to give you their credit card or a check. It is all contactless. So those were some of the examples of ways that we saw um, existing features being used differently. Cool. Um, 
we just have a few more questions before we dive into the Q&A with attendees. So I want to remind everybody to send in any questions you have for Molly or Michelle or me um, through the Q&A feature. And we actually do have one question that I think maybe we should answer right now. Courtney is wondering the name of that function that Michelle was referring to. What was it, Molly? Um, per day classes. Cool. Um, so back to you, Michelle. I'm, I'm curious, um, sort of looking forward to the future, uh, to the fall. So much is still unknown. So how are you approaching planning, um, making sure your customer service continues to be excellent when there's so many unanswered questions and also when you have studios in two different states with two different sets of reopening guidelines? That it has been very interesting, um, but it actually has been a blessing having um, my Fort Mill studio because we've been open there for two and a half, three months now, and everything's gone beautifully. Um, we do the temperatures um, every time the children enter. Um, it, the masks were mandated and then not. Um, and so right now they don't have to wear them. Teach staff do, you know, I have them over their um, face. They can pull them under their chin when they can social distance. Um, we've done all the things and kind of learned from the process the first, you know, from starting it in one and now moving it into the other. So I feel um, like it actually was a blessing that we had, we were able to start one and kind of work the kinks out of it. It's just knowing, I think the thing that I have done the most is when you have a parent that is really intensely upset over something that just seems so small, I, I stop and think about what their kitchen and living room must look like with all these extra children in the house constantly, you know, you're, you're never alone. You don't, you can't even take a bath. You can't do anything um, without all this, this extra. So I try to just breathe before I answer any questions. And I'm trying to be a little bit more accommodating now um, that I do know that they are what they're going through as parents. I only have one daughter and she's in college now. So my, um, my time at home felt a little different than my students, the parents that have five children. So, and I try to realize that they're having to be homeschool parents. They're, they're doing so much. So I'm trying to be a little bit easier with, um, with how I handle the parents and their needs going forward. I also want to continue to give them more than they're paying for. So, um, we're getting ready in case there is another shutdown that we're a little more prepared this time. Um, we'll kind of know what to expect. Um, I am pretending it's business as usual and that things are just gonna keep moving, but I keep my A, B, C, and D plan always in my back pocket in case we do have a slide back or, or something doesn't go our way. So I think just us going into it this time right now, we're professionals. Like we know what we're doing. Now, March 15th, I did not know a thing I was doing. Now I could work at the Best Buy. I'm so technological now. So I just, um, I just, I just, think that we all need to look at this as we're, we're having blessings getting back into space, trying not to look at it as, oh my gosh, we only have 50% enrollment or 55 or we have less than we had before. Think about we had none on, you know, April 15th, you know, we're just trying to maintain. Now we're starting a fresh year with, with broader knowledge as to what's going on and what we need to plan for. Uh. And what about from your perspective, Molly, looking forward, um, what's, what's next for Jackrabbit? How, um, how are you sort of gonna continue to support dance studios as, again, things change rapidly and we don't really know what's next? Well, it's, it's awesome just hearing Michelle, like we're experts at this now, like just mm -hmm. the positivity and the energy around that, like we, we have the best clients and it's awesome, it's, it's easy to deliver great products when you have clients like that. And it's, it's, what we, it's what we live and love to do, live for and love to do. Um, so one thing, I didn't mention this whenever I was talking about the fast track enhancements, which is what we call the enhancements that we came out with as a result of COVID. Um, our, our teams, the, the product team and the development team, they did an awesome job at just not thinking about the short term, what would get um, our clients through coronavirus, but what, what, how could they use these um, like the infrastructure of these enhancements in the future. So um, just knowing that you're not going to have to learn this new feature, how to use something and use it day in and day out, and then just it be out of your daily workflow. Like that's not necessarily fair. 
So that's one thing that um, studios and our clients can look forward to is to be able to use these, but in different ways, not just to survive, but to really grow, you know, like when, when you're operating at not 55% capacity, but 100%, you know. Um, we have every year we execute on enhancements that we are going to roll out through all of um, throughout the 12 months. So when 2020 came, we were we were executing, we were hitting all of our our milestones, what we wanted to release, and then March came and we were like, <laughs> okay, let's pivot to all these fast track enhancements. On the back end, our teams were still rolling out um, work to get us to execute on our 2020 enhancements and new product releases. So other things that are coming down the pipeline for um, for Jackrabbit are, you know, you're going to see a lot of automation. You're going to see a new um, user experience, a new kind of interface um, with Jackrabbit. It's so exciting. Um, you know, new isn't always easy for people to digest, but I feel like, I, I mean, everything with coronavirus is new. Like, our studios are prime for, for new. So I'm, I'm very excited for the stuff that is coming out um, the, ma the remainder of 2020 and just other things like, um, I, I said automation, but making payments um, required upon registration and enrollment, um, just, just other little things that I think our studios are going to really appreciate having in their back pocket. Totally. All right, cool. Um, we will move on to the Q&A unless Molly or Michelle, either of you have any um, sort of last thoughts before the Q&A? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, let's dive on in. Let's dive in. All right. My colleague Amanda Sherwin is going to jump in and um, let us know what kind of questions we're getting. Yeah, great. Um, we had a few people asking this. Um, Someone asked, all of these features sound like they would make our lives easier as studio owners. Um, do I receive all of the features with Jackrabbit or do I have to pay more for them? No, you receive them all. Great. <laughs> um, next, we had Melissa Williams asking, what are some ways to gain dance teachers as a small dance business? Okay, I can take that one. Um, there are a lot of people looking for jobs now. So um, this is actually the best time. Um, and what I did, what, what I, on my um, website, is I always have a place that you can um, go to if you want to get a job in Miller Street. So I always have that open, so I'm constantly getting applications. On a normal year, I get 150 to 200 a year, people wanting jobs. I sent out on social media, in the dance teacher networks and everywhere that I was looking for teachers that could teach every genre of dance. And I got a lot of very good leads and some very quality teachers. Um, most interestingly, I have a, um, an, an arts magnet school in the Charlotte area that I have hired teachers from. So if you have a magnet school that is the arts, I suggest calling there, talking with them. Um, if you can get hooked up with a principal that would help give you leads, a lot of times these ladies would like extra hours and Saturdays and that type of thing. So um, I find that the quality, because they're already good with children because they're school teachers. Um, so those have been good. So, and you certainly can, if you have any other questions along that line, I, you can just email me, um, contact me through my website, and I'll be glad to give you any information and even try to help connect you with people. Um, I'm blessed enough to have a lot of friends around the area, so I'll, you know, around the nation that I can help make that connection. Thanks, Michelle. Great. Um, our next question is, what is the implementation process like for a new Jackrabbit customer? And specifically, someone was asking, is it hard to learn how to use the parent portal? Um, I can take the implementation one and then we can jump into the portal. So um, getting started with Jackrabbit is extremely easy. You can um, reach out to our onboarding and implementation team for a live demo and they can walk you through the entire process. Um, those usually take about 30 minutes. Um, so they can show you all of Jackrabbit dance. They'll ask you for like your, oh, there it is, perfect. Um, they'll ask you for um, like the, the three things that you want to to learn about. And then they'll just walk you through how to use the entire platform. 
um, you'll leave that with your free demo or your, yeah, your free demo, which is a 30 day period that you get to try the software. You can upload your data. You can use, use your students, use your classes. Um, you'll have a coach, um, probably the same, one of the same people that gave you the demo. They'll work you through that, um, that process. There's a quick start wizard that we have. So if you are more of a do it yourself type person, you can set it up. Um, your whole system in about 30 minutes. So if you are perusing the internet one night, it's nine o'clock, you're like, I'm going to do this. You have the option to do it there. Um, we have what we call jumpstart calls that you can, you can um, be in contact with your product coach and they will just make sure that you are using the system right. If you maybe run into a snag, they can look back to see where you might have taken a wrong turn get you using the platform um, in a way that makes sense for your business. I mean, we have people um, using this thing, I mean, tailored to the way that they want to, tailored to what makes sense for their business. You know, maybe you don't um, do as many competitions, so you don't necessarily need to do, to order as many costumes, you don't really need the costume um, module as much. So they're really going to help you in, those jump, in that jumpstart call, and you can have more. Um, they're really gonna help you make sure that you're using the system to your specifications. And then whenever you've reached that 30 day mark, then you buy now. Um, and then you get kicked over to, not kicked over, you get lovingly passed over to um, <laughs> our support side of the world and um, they are great. And I'm sure, um, you know, Michelle's been in contact with all of them for all of the years that she's been at Jackrabbit. But, you know, there's, it, it doesn't just start, stop. You know, it doesn't, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. You have a long line of support um, from the first time that you demo to when you buy and then whenever you are um, renewing with us year after year. Yeah, I, I, I hope have, that that answered the question. Yes, and I, as, as a customer, and I have been with Jackrabbit, and I don't even know how many years now, but a bunch of them, um, is that we, the customer service is what we need because as you know, you will sweat like a booger bear whenever there's something going wrong and you feel like I... I, oh no, oh no, oh no, something's going wrong. You have that support there and everything is so easy. The, it's just, it's just user friendly. I've never had a parent say, well, I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to do this. I am not technological at all. My staff, if, if I even scream about anything, they know I'm not wounded. They just know I can't get the printer to work or something and they'll all come <laughs> running and fix it. So I don't even have a chance to be good at it because they just don't want to deal with me. But it's, it is even when I'm going in and I'm looking through Jackrabbit trying to get information, it's just so user friendly and so easy. And, um, I, I have to tell you, um, when we went to Jackrabbit and we could do the, the auto pay, what's that, um, the, the payment, I don't know. payment? Yes. Um, before that, we used to type in everyone's credit card number, that long thing, put in the expiration date, the amount, push send. It took hours. Then we'd print the receipt, staple it, and give it for, to the families. And this was when we had a thousand students. So it was a lot every month. It took hours and hours and hours. And I remember when my office manager said, okay, I'm getting ready to draft payments the first time. She says, watch this. She pushed a button and she said, done. So it literally saves so many hours of us, the office staff having to endure that. So, and Jackrabbit will grow with you. If you have questions and comments and suggestions, they'll, they'll answer them and you'll find that they will work on a product that will take care of that problem in, in months and years to come. But that's what I've found. And to be able to service somebody um, as a, for a hundred kids studio and then someone with, with thousands of children is such a blessing because then you, you can grow. You have that, that chance of growth. You don't have to stop and go to a whole nother company to do, to accommodate you. So I just can't say enough. And I even go um, on these dance teachers and they'll ask somebody, I'll have a jackrabbit question. Sometimes I can answer it. And if not, I'm like, you need to call customer service because I, a lot of times I can say, oh, that's easy, this, that, or the other, but um, I never want to get it wrong. So usually I'll say, no, go ahead, have a ticket pulled and, and they'll call you right back or whatever there. It's amazing. The customer service is, is second to none. Great. Did either of you want to say more about the parent portal? I know that was sort of part of the question. Yeah, was it, can you repeat that one part of the question? Was it the ease of the parents to use it, learn it? I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. 
Michelle, do you want to take that? Yeah. I mean, I can speak to, I'm a parent who uses the parent portal, but you obviously mm-hmm. hear more feedback than me. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just, everybody always, and, and they'll always say, you guys are so organized. This was just so easy. And because of having everything in their portals, they can see what they've paid. They just feel like they know what's going on. I, it scares a lot of people to have their monthly tuition drafted. You know how you, these recurring things can sometimes feel like they're, they're, they're not only up and up and they can go in and see and see if they've had a private lesson, if they've paid for it, everything is right there. So um, I, I have never had one parent have a complaint and that's a lot of folks that I have to see. So I can't say enough about it. But of course, Molly, you're a mom that uses it for I don't, swim or something. Don't you use it as a parent? Dance. You do it for dance. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you can speak as an actual parent using it. Um, can y'all hear me? One of my ear pods just went dead, of course. We can yeah, hear you. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, at the very beginning, I think Michelle, you said parents are just inundated with information. And I remember, so my four-year-old daughter, she dances um, at a Jack or a studio that uses Jack Rabbit. And I have a, a six-month-old son. And right during, you know, during the shutdown, and I remember specifically around recital time, just trying to figure out, you know, the recital would be this plan one day, and then 30 minutes it would change, and then the next day it would change. And um, as a parent, like it's it's hard receiving all of those emails because you're you're getting every type of email about how any type of business is responding to coronavirus, right? So um, I remember sitting like in the middle of the night, just like rocking my son. I was like, something came through about the recital. What was it? And then I knew I could go into my parent portal. So it was just, it was so easy and it was just like, I mean, it's just so refreshing. Like, I know, I know how to get this information. Like, I remember seeing it, I know how to get it and I can just access it um, at at my own time because right message, right place, right time. It just kind of got flipped on its head there for a little bit. Totally. Michelle, there's one question for you. Okay. Um, You are in the unique position of having two different studios in two different states. Um, So someone was wondering how you used the software differently for each studio and how you provided customer service differently. Okay, Um, that's a great question. Um, We run both studios as if they're the same. Um, So that way, if my office staff switches and goes to another studio, all the systems are in place and everything's done the same. So I don't do a lot of things differently for one than the other. Um, All of those systems seem to work. the same and we we do everything exactly the same um with baxter opening baxter village and fort mill opening before the other one we started you know doing zooms and live classes because my my students can come in or be or be on zoom so all those classes so all that information is always there so if a child is sick or they can't get a ride or whatever if they can't make it for class they can zoom in others that are not comfortable coming in and out in public yet are zooming in every week. So we've just got all these features and there are so many features that I, I do not even use as, as much as we use in it. There's still things that we have not had to use or, or don't even really pertain to me that may later. Um, so I don't even know if I'm getting full use out of my jackrabbit. I would have to <laughs> certainly do some research on that, but it seems like there's nothing that I need that we don't, that isn't right there. So even starting this new pathway program and then the daily class thing, that was amazing. I actually have my pencil and paper tick sheet going. So, you know, and nothing can go worse than that. So, um, so it's just, these kinds of features have really helped me. And I have the pathway at both studios um, and I'm dealing with two different states, all these different school systems, everything. So it is a lot to keep up with. Yeah. All right, Amanda, do we have maybe one more question for Molly or? Um, someone was asking if there's a limit to students that can be enrolled on Jackrabbit. No, there's not. Nope. There you go. (laughs) All right, maybe one more question. (laughs) (laughs) That was easy. (laughs) Um, someone was asking, going forward, um, how can they use the different features that Jackrabbit has created sort of with the pandemic in mind, um, just in normal um, normal life of running a studio. (laughs) So I would, um, that's where I would recommend you get with a product coach, get your live demo. You can have that 30 day free trial and you can talk with, um, talk with the product coach throughout your jumpstart calls. They are really going to be able to dissect what it is that you need. 
um, because they see this day in and day out of um, clients who are using, who are tailoring Jackrabbit to meet their specific needs. So that's, um, that's what I would encourage you to do, just so, because they can give you the exact, um, exact use case for you, and it's great. Might as well just try it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you so much, Molly and Michelle, for being here. Thank you to all of our attendees. Um, we're grateful that you came. Um, and if you want to learn more about Jackrabbit, um, the website is right there. It's jackrabbitdance.com, um, as well as an email where you can get in touch, info at jackrabbittech.com. And then if you are not subscribed to Dance Business Weekly, head on over to dancebusinessweekly.com and make sure you're subscribed and we're getting in your inbox every Thursday afternoon. And I am also available if you have any um, questions, thoughts, ideas, shoot me a note. And um, until next time, thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Bye.